Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI Z87G41. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This motherboard features the Z87 chipset from Intel and it is also based on the 1150 socket. Uh, so that means it's set up for Intel's fourth generation core processors also known as Haswell, and bear in mind that the socket in this motherboard is not going to be backwards compatible with the Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge processors. So you will need a fourth gen core processor such as a 4770K or 4670K. Uh, other than that, we're using MSI's military class four specifications. Uh, so that's going to give you high quality components. As shown down here in the lower right, uh, you get protection from such uh, PC killing things as humidity, high temperatures, uh, electromagnetic interference, as well as electrostatic discharge. Uh, also, you get support for some cool features, such as uh, three display outputs natively using the uh, iGPU in your Intel 4th Gen uh, core processor. PCI Express Gen 3 also supported a graphical click BIOS that you can use your mouse in. Uh, also, RAID functionality by way of the PCH in the Z Z87 chipset. Uh, here's a look at the back of the box and uh, some more stuff such as the uh, 60 amp chokes that they're using uh, in the motherboard, also all solid capacitors for longer lifespan uh, of your motherboard components and longer li lifespan of your motherboard overall. Also some details on the military class components that are used, uh, humidity, ESD, EMI, and high temperature protection. Below that you have some more detailed specifications. These should all be listed on the um, product page and I'll be going over a lot of these as well when we take a close look at the motherboard. But you also have an uh, IO overview right there. Uh, beyond that you have uh, 4K Ultra HD support for uh, resolutions up to 3840 by 2160. Uh, you get MSI's command center software so you can con uh, control your PC settings and uh, UEFI settings from within the uh, operating system. Also you get OC Genie 4 which is the one, uh, one click performance boost that will give you an automatic overclock on your system. Uh, and then back to the bottom where we have some more information on uh, stuff like the triple display, PCI Express Gen 3 which effectively gives you double the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen, uh, Gen 2. Uh, the Click BIOS as well, and Super Raid, uh, again, right there. Let's take a look at accessories. Inside the retail box, we have motherboard itself, of course. We're going to finish on that. We also have some accessories as well as documentation. All right, so first off, you got your drivers and utilities disk right here. You can use this disk, or you could download the newest drivers from the MSI website, which I usually recommend. You also get a quick installation guide for, in case you have not put a computer together so far. Uh, you could also check our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV. And then you get your main motherboard manual, which is very, very important to keep on hand while you're doing your build. You get important information in here, such as a layout of all the components that are installed on the motherboard, a actual layout of the board pointing you out what is what, and uh, again, a kind of a step-by-step -step walkthrough of installing the different components. For serial ATA connectivity, you get two serial ATA cables. These are going to be revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so don't worry about using them with uh, the highest end SSD or your entry-level mechanical hard drive. Uh, you also have angled, 90-degree angled plugs on uh, one end and a straight plug on the other end, and they also have the little clasps that help hold them in place. Uh, lastly, for accessories, you get a motherboard I.O. shield, a pretty basic one here. It's got some imprints on there telling you what is what. Make sure you install this before you install your motherboard. And now a close-up look at the Z87G41 itself. And uh, as you can probably tell, we have a black and blue color scheme going on. We also have some brown in the PCB at the back. It is a dark brown PCB. Flipping here to the back, you will notice the color, probably. Uh, also note that you got push pins holding on the heatsink for your Z87 chip down here, which typically isn't something you would ever need to remove, but uh, just to point that out, something to bear in mind. Uh, also for fan headers on the board itself, you do have a total of five. Uh, you have a couple four pin PWM CPU fan headers up there at the top. Uh, you also have a four pin PWM capable uh, system fan header right here. Then you got a couple three pin fan headers, one here on the upper middle right and one here down at the bottom center. Uh, let's go ahead and take a close-up look at the different connection points on the motherboard. So we'll start down here in the lower right uh, and we'll begin with our front panel connectors. Uh, so you have front panel uh, one and two right there. That's going to be where you connect your hard drive and power and activity lights and all that kind of th all that sort of thing. Uh, you might also notice a chassis intrusion header which is available right there. A couple of USB 2.0 connectors right there for front panel USB. Uh, the system fan header that I mentioned already. Uh, trusted platform module header right there. 
Uh, you also have the JBAT one header, that's actually a clear CMOS, so you just need to break out a jumper for that. Uh, you get a parallel connector right here, so for those of you who might still have an older printer that uses a parallel connector, uh, you can route this cable over to, uh, say, a PCI bracket at the back of your case, that will give you a connection via that. You also have a COM header right here, uh, your audio connection right there, and that's going to be for your front panel audio for mic and headphones. Uh, and then speaking of audio, we have your uh, audio chip right there, which is a Realtek ALC887 audio chip. Uh, and then moving right along, we have our PCI Express. So PCI and PCI Express, I should say, you do have a bit of both. So for PCI Express, you have X1 right here and an X1 right here. You have a full-length X16 PCI Express right here, and then another full-length X16 right here. This is actually wired up for X8. Uh, now, bear in mind here that you have PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility with your top slot. You have PCI Express Gen 2 compatibility with this, this slot. Uh, if you're just running a single GPU, for example, this will run at X16. If you're going to run both, you can run at X4 and X4. Uh, and you do have Crossfire X capabilities with that if you're going to go with an AMD two-card solution. Uh, also down here at the bottom, you have a couple legacy PCI uh, slots. And again, if you have an older PCI, uh, add-on card that you are not want, willing to part with, well that will allow you to still use it in this new motherboard. Uh, also you got the MSI logo right there and that is uh, providing a bit of, bit of heat dissipation for your Z87 chipset. And the Z87 chipset, by the way, has a peripheral controller hub, or PCH, that is uh, controlling your serial ATA connection points. So you have a couple facing straight out uh, right, right there, and then you have a couple side facing 90 degree angled ones which are right there. Uh, and the cool thing about Z87 is that it actually has gives you PCI Express Gen 3 on all six of those slot, all those of those ports, I should say. Uh, and you also get RAID support, so you can do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, or RAID 10 by connecting uh, a number of drives or SSDs to those connection points. All right, moving right along up the side of the motherboard, uh, you'll notice a blue port right there. That is your 20-pin USB 3.0 front panel connector, so if you have a case with that, uh, you can plug it in right there. That will control a couple USB 3.0 ports. You also have your main 24-pin motherboard power connector right there. The 3-pin system fan header that I pointed out uh, when I was talking about system fans right there next to it. And then you have your DDR3 memory slots, so these are your uh, DIMM slots. Bear in mind that you have dual-channel dual capability, so you will want to populate I would recommend at least two DIMMs uh, to start out with, and I recommend buying them in a, in a pair if you're going to go that route. If you're going to populate all four, it's uh, often best to buy a, a four DIMM kit, uh, but you can mix and match. Um, I would also recommend, based on the manual, going with the colored slots, match those up, and that will give you dual channel support. Uh, as far as memory capacity goes, you can do up to eight gigs per DIMM, so that can give you up to 32 gigs total if you populate all four with eight gig DIMMs. And then for uh, memory speeds, you can do 1600 officially from Intel, uh, but this board does support memory overclock speeds all the way up to 3000. But I have a feeling if you're going to be purchasing a DDR3 3000 kit, you're probably going to be going with one of the other boards in the MSI line because this is a little bit more towards an entry level board, uh, as you'll notice when we get over here as well to the, uh, the CPU VRM area. Let's talk about the CPU itself first. Uh, we get this, or the socket, I should say. It is a, an 1150 socket, and again, this is not backwards compatible uh, with your Generation 2 or Generation 3 Intel Core processors. Those are uh, Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. The newest one is Gen 4, that is uh, codenamed Haswell, and uh, you will need that CPU to go in this socket because that's the only series that's currently compatible with it. Uh, also, you'll notice some of your power delivery components uh, going around here. So these are the military class 4 components. Uh, so here are your 60 amp chokes, for example. You also have uh, caps and MOSFETs down below there. Uh, bear in mind, you don't have act any uh, actual coolers on these. So uh, this, while this board can do overclocking, uh, if you are really looking for an overclock board, I recommend at least jumping up to the... Uh, the G43, because uh, that will give you a bit of extra cooling on there. If you, as long as you have uh, an active CPU fan providing a little, little bit of airflow over this area, you should have no problems running at stock speeds or even some modest overclocks. Uh, but then finally, you have your supplemental CPU power connector up there on the top left. That's an 8-pin. Make sure you run a cable over from your power supply and connect that to get your computer up and running at its rated speeds. All right, lastly, we're going to finish with your uh, I.O. over here on the side. So uh, first off, you have a couple PS2 ports for microphone and, I'm sorry, for 
mouse and keyboard. Uh, you also have a couple USB 2.0 right here, as well as a couple more over here. So four more USB 2 on the, on the rear I.O., uh, a couple more USB 3.0 ports. Then your video connectors, and the video connectors are going to be for the iGPU in your processor once it is installed. Uh, so here's your HDMI, and uh, you can do that 4K support via HDMI at 24 hertz. You can do up to 4096 by 2160. Uh, if you want to uh, rack 60 hertz via the HDMI out, uh, you can do up to 2560 by 1600. Uh, you also have VGA and DVI. Bear in mind, this is a digital-only VGI, di digital-only DVI. If you're going to need an analog connector, uh, make sure you use that VGA port. Uh, and then for your DVI as well as the VGA, you can do up to 1920 by 1200. Uh, finally, you got an RJ45 port right there, and that's for your Realtek RTL 8111G gigabit network connection. And then finally, you got some analog audio connectors right there, uh, your outputs as well as your microphone input, and that's again for your Realtek ALC887 audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our unboxing and overview of the MSI Z87 G41 motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset as well as the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors. If you enjoyed this video, well, you should hit the like button to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.